The actors were told what parts they were playing and um, given cue scripts. So they were just given their cue, their lines, and that's it, uh, and scenes that they were in. Um, the reason we did this is because this is a, a Shakespeare play, and we're going along the premise that this is probably not necessarily ever written by Shakespeare, and we know that to be true. Louis Theobald adapted what he said was a Shakespeare manuscript. So we have his word for it, that he knew, that he saw somewhere along the way Shakespeare write a play similar to the one we're presenting. Um, we only have his manuscript. So we're going to go on the basis that at some point this might have been somehow inspired by Shakespeare. Which means this is the only Shakespeare play that this company or any company in the world has never read before. So this is the only play where people don't know the, the relationships already, they don't know the end results, they don't know anything about the play. So we decided cue scripts because you could really be surprised. The actors can't make up any judgments. They have to be in the room and they have to be listening. Everyone's starting from scratch. You know, there was a printing press back then, but it was expensive to get things printed. And who has time to write out an entire script for 16 actors? You, they don't. They wrote it out once, and that was the book prompter's script. <laughs> and then everyone else got their parts written out with their cue lines. And it saved time, and that's what you got. Enrique's younger son to the Duke is uh, wooing Violante. Violante is not interested in Enrique's. At the same time, Leonora is in love with Julio, Enrique's friend. Julio is also in love with Leonora. But her father, Don Bernard, is holding out for bigger fish. So, Enrique's takes Violante against her will. Eh, what's he gonna do? And then immediately loses interest in her and realizes he actually loves Leonora. So he sends away to his brother, Roderick, at court to send for Julio to get him out of the way and says to Julio, I will woo your mistress in your name while you're gone. But he doesn't. He actually approaches Don Bernard and says, I'm going to love her. Don Bernard says, cool, you're the younger son of a duke, you can have her. Leonora pretends or decides that she's going to kill herself if she has to marry Enriquez. She sends away for Julio. Julio comes back in disguise and attempts to break up the wedding. He gets banished by Enriquez, so Julio runs away. Violante, in the meantime, because now she's been taken against her will and is ashamed, runs away too. So now they're wandering in the woods. Violante decides to dress up as a boy, because that's what you do after you get ravished, and meets up with a master of the flock and his two shepherds. Julio has, in the meantime, gone a little crazy while he's in the woods. So Julio recognizes Violante as a girl, where the master of the flock and the two shepherds had not. Once revealed that she might be a girl, the master of the flock decides, oh, that's why I like her, and so attempts to ravish her. Roderick, who has been wandering the woods looking for Enriquez and Julio, who ran away from court as well, uh, discovers the master of the flock as he is attempting to ravish the boy, Violante, and uh, interrupts them. Violante runs away. Uh, Enrique says, I am in love with this girl in the convent. That's why I've run away. Help me get her brother. Roderick says, ah, I just passed this hearse and this funeral. So we'll take the coffin and the hearse and we'll go to the convent and pretend that we're mourners needing a night stay. And then we'll kidnap your girl and get her out of the uh, convent. Enrique says, that sounds great. So they do so. I have stood by this from the beginning. There is no other ensemble that I know of in town or anywhere else who could find so much entertainment in this play. If there is anyone who can turn this bad script into a really good show that you're going to want to come see, it's this cast.